Griffith. I'm the Associate Pastor for Adult Education and Spiritual Nurture. It's hard to believe, but I came in uh, 2006, so I've been here uh, 17 years already, my 18th year. Uh, the person whose position I took over started Disciple. Disciple is a, a, a in-depth Bible study that uh, is really for four years. The first year we study the whole of the Bible. The second year we look at Genesis, Exodus, Luke, Acts. The third year we do the Old Testament prophets and the Pauline letters. And then in the final year we look at the writings of the Old Testament, the Gospel of John, the writings of James and Revelation. And it's a wonderful way to be a small group uh, as well as seriously study scripture to develop biblical literacy. Um, one of the things my job is, is to try to help a large church feel small. And so having relational Bible studies where we can struggle together what the meaning of the text is, is one of the real gifts, I think, of the Disciple Program. What's interesting is the person who bridged between when Trace was here and when I came told me that he thought the Disciple Program was finished. Uh, and uh, I have been doing it every year, multiple classes every year since. And there seems to be a continual growth and desire to do it. It's one of the best uh, kind of in-depth Bible studies that I know. Well, I'm Sharon Warfield. I, have, um, I became a member of Westminster in 1977, it's been a long time. And guy, um, I was in your first disciple group when you came in 2006. Yeah. Um, I'm speaking for our small group that has been together since 2006. We have a core group that have met over all of those years, but then we've had people come and go and join and depart and so forth. But our core group has been together since, since you. Yeah. And of course we've done all of the um, disciples some of them multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them multiple times. And that was interesting because we could go back and revisit where we were when we first took that particular one and see how far, or we hope we've come further, see how far we've come since we first um, studied that group. But um, we have done so many studies over the years and have enjoyed being together. And, what I want to speak to is the, the small group um, aspect of, of being able to be part of somebody's life, life, death, birth, weddings, children, er grandchildren, everything that we have lived with each other. And when we first um, got together, we made a covenant within ourselves that what we say in our class remains in our class and therefore that opens up a whole um, freedom to discuss things that you might not be able to discuss in a group that you didn't know well so it is a blessing it has been a blessing for all of us and if all the ladies were here we've had some men but basically ladies if all the ladies were here they would I think they would say that that disciple in our studies and our group has been a blessing to their lives and we continue on. I'm Ned Munson. I've been a, a member at Westminster since 2015. I uh, have done the, the Disciple 1 course and the Disciple 4 course, uh, both with Guy. And uh, I have found that, that both of those together have been a formative experience for me. And being a church member, um, and kind of guiding why it is that I go to church. I think um, I had this feeling, and I think a lot of people do at some point, you know, for me it was in my 30s, pe people have it in their different, in different stages of life, um, you know, an urge to, to start going to church. And for me, I was like, why is that? You know, is that because um, I need, you know, a weekly uh, pageant to get dressed up for? Is it a morality contest? Uh, why do I care about going to church? And for me, the, the avenue uh, with Guy was, was disciple to kind of unpack that, uh, to help you figure out that 
you know, going to church is, is the way to understand life and, and thought being a Christian is a coherent belief system um, that kind of gives you strength and, and, um, and understanding. And so I, um, I found the disciple programming to be very, very fulfilling uh, it also was a great experience to do so in a small group where we got to know everybody very well. Uh, Ned, one of the things I, we had talked about earlier was uh, having to move to a Zoom uh, because of the pandemic, but also with you being a working guy, it allowed you to participate. Absolutely. Uh, whereas having young children at home you know, nights were hard now and Absolutely. and all of that. So it's interesting that many of our classes now are Zoom only and it allows our folks who travel for work and all of that to participate. For me, unfortunately, it means uh, I teach one class on a Tuesday night. I teach another one at 645 on Thursday morning and I'm teaching another one over lunch at Thursday, but it's a way that we can uh, allow our working folks to, to to participate as well. So constantly trying to figure out ways we can have it where people uh, schedules uh, enable them to participate. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so for Disciple One, we did ours in person at I think it was 6:30 Wednesday nights, right. which was great. When I uh, had one non-mobile child at home. Uh, Disciple 4 uh, had to be on Zoom because it was over COVID, but it was, I don't know that I'd be able to do it if it weren't over right. Zoom. I know for you, <laughs> the, the hours have become endless, but it was, it was a big, um, that, that was big for us. Well, what I would like to add is that there's a group, a disciple group, if that's what you, you know, the umbrella is disciple, for everybody. Um, if you're thinking about doing it, there are Zoom meetings, their daytime meetings, their night meetings. There used to be some Sunday afternoon meetings. There's something I think to be had if, for everybody at a time slot that they might be able to uh, participate. Our Zoom classes were intergenerational, and I think they worked really well. I think the camaraderie and the chemistry was great uh, as a setup for intergenerational community within our church. We were lucky in that, and I think this is the case certainly for you, um, Sharon, that uh, a, that a lot of disciple classes who started Disciple One tend to go through the other disciple classes together, and that was the case for ours. We had a number of people who did uh, who did Disciple One and Four together, and so um, I think that was a big part of it. It's it, it's helped, especially for me joining relatively later in the process than maybe some of the other disciple folks that helped me integrate into the church a little bit more than I would have been able to without doing disciple. So it was, it, that was a big part of it for me, for sure. Melinda Coles, you are the bedrock of disciple in this church. <laughs> Tell me how you guys, because you got started before I, got, I came. Yeah. Yeah. The first uh, disciple class offering at Westminster, I looked it up. 2002, wow. fall of 2002. When did you come, Guy? Uh, summer of 2006. Okay. Yeah. So it was 2002. Trace Haythorn, Susan has said she's interviewed, and people can look at that video, started the class in fall of 2002. And there were 16 uh, women. It was all women on that first class. Some people were not even members of Westminster, but they'd heard, I guess, about the program. So uh, we finished that year, and Trace said to us, now you've been through Disciple 1, now within your group, you look for your leaders for Disciple 2 and 3 and 4 and on. So but we did it as a group pro project for Disciple 2. And each year the numbers got a little smaller. So we made it through Disciple 4, but at some point, uh, Denise DePayne, and I, and Denise was in that first class uh, with all the others, uh, decided we'd like to teach one because it's so significant. And uh, in Disciple One, it's fabulous because you do uh, a survey of the entire Bible and it changed 
my worship experience. Mm -hmm. Because you'd hear the text in the sermon and in the Psalms, and golly, I, I know where that sort of fits in the Word of God that we have is the basis of our faith and our church and our worship. I was so impressed at how how you discipled them so well. And you have a, such a gift with doing that, bringing some additional things in that I generally don't. Oh. But um, after Denise was no longer able to teach, then Susan Weathersby yes. uh, sort of came in with you, and you've got another group of women that you've been working with. Yes. Yeah. And it, that's uh, the real, or one of the many gifts, is the relationships and I think Disciple uh, wants to help you increase your uh, praying time and efforts and ability and deepen your prayer life. And we really uh, include that as part of the, the Disciple lesson. We do a little worship service. It takes five minutes before we begin our class. And then also in Disciple class, we uh, uh, covenant to pray for each other. So we're intentional about that. Every week we have another member that we are praying for specifically. And then at the end of the class, we have prayer concerns. And those would be prayer concerns from the community, from friends, from our families. Um, and, uh, and we covenant to pray for those during the week. Yeah. So the prayer part is really important yeah. for the commitment yeah. to studying the word. I, I was just sitting here thinking, I've not tallied up how many people that we've had go through Disciple, but it's a sizable portion of the congregation. I would think in excess of 400 people in the time that I've been here. And one of the things that I like, and I know in some of the classes you do the traditional class, which well, the yeah. Disciple one is, I think, 34 weeks. Mm -hmm. And I've gone to the more... Uh, fast track model which is 12 weeks old testament 12 weeks new testament and uh it is frustrating because you know sometimes they kind of combine two lessons into one mm -hmm. which is like trying to put 10 pounds of sugar in a five pound bag it definitely just, it makes it hard but what i like about the curriculum is that it's a part commentary so you have a number of pages to read that really does provide good context for the biblical stuff it's part daily devotional because it, the curriculum is designed for you to read, keep up the reading every day of the week. And so you're not stressed and overwhelmed with one long lesson, but you can break it up. And then it's also a personal journal. It, it asks questions that make you reflect a little bit more internally about what the text means to you and how you're living out in the world. And so to me, that's one of the great gifts of the curriculum itself. Okay. Yes, it's wonderful. And uh, this year, we're getting into uh, Disciple 4, and the videos are always really helpful with the uh, scholars. Right. This year, we're starting, we'll be reading Ruth, and the first video is Amy Jo Levine. Uh -huh. And then also, we, you know, we recognize people, mm -hmm. the scholars amongst the uh, and the music. And Including uh, our own Sam Levine. Yes, he does, yeah. does the music, and so we feel very close and personal. Yeah.